Hi students, I am going to show you really quick how to set up your very own Google site for your student blogging project or whatever other writing project your teacher wants you to use Google Sites for so that you can share your writing with a larger audience. It won't just be for your teacher's eyes, but you might be sharing this with your classmates and with other people in the school community, with your family, friends, so on and so forth. So you wanna make sure that the site that you are putting together reflects who you are, but also is a professional representation of all the hard work that you have put into your writing. So let's go ahead and get started. You will need to go to sites.google.com. Once you get here, there are some templates that you can use to quick start your Google site creation if you want to browse through the templates gallery. Otherwise, you are going to want to click on the blank template over here, which I'm going to use for purposes of demonstration. So go ahead and click on the plus button with me. Just a quick tour around. This is the home page, the default that you will land on once you click to create your site. Over here to the right, we have our toolbar of all of the things that can possibly be inserted on the page. So you can see that there are a ton of options for you, including some pre-made content blocks. Over here where it says pages, we're going to get to that in just a moment. This will allow you to create pages other than just your home page for separate pieces of content that you want to put on your site. And then finally, there are some pre-made themes that you can choose from to customize the look and feel of it all. But we are going to start by giving our home page a title. Ms. A's blog of awesomeness. And we can play around with the font. Anytime you add text, you can choose one of these preloaded Google fonts, of which there are many, many options. This is defaulted to the title case, but you can change throughout to heading, subheading, and smaller text, as well as normal text. You can manually change the size from there. You can change the color and you can even link it to something. Anytime you see and hover on the sides of something that you add, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, and you'll see that there are grid lines that kind of guide you and how big you can make it so you can make it symmetrical. So I can do that. Maybe I wanna change my theme completely and it has some default fonts and background images that it might give you, but you can change the style from modern to classic to bold. You can change the color. Maybe you don't like that. Maybe you're gonna come here. Maybe you don't like that image in the back. You can click here to upload your own or select from a pre-made image. I'm gonna choose the ocean. And you'll see when you have a background image, this little twinkly guy, it's automatically adjusting so that it does not interfere with the reader's ability to see the text that you overlay on top of it, which is a really nice feature. You can change the header type on your homepage. You can make it really, really big. You can make it a little bit smaller, but still big. You can go to the default, which is the banner, or you can make it super simple and just do the title. And then from there, you can insert whatever content blocks you like. If you wanted to keep it super simple, maybe you're gonna start with a text box and you might wanna make this, let me just move myself here. You might wanna make this a heading because this is the title of your page. Witty title here. And then maybe I'm gonna click again. This is where I would start the paragraph. But like I said, there are some pre-made content blocks that make your life a lot easier. And so maybe I want to, instead of doing this, maybe I want to just use this one because it has an image, it has a title, it has a place for me to start the text right away. Anything that you add that you change your mind about or you don't like, you can click the trash can to get rid of it. And then each section that you add to the page, you can also come over here and duplicate it, or you can change the style 
of the background. So maybe I wanna make the section stand out a little bit and you can alternate between this light gray, the really dark, or even putting an image in the background, which is nice. And again, you can upload an image of your own and you can use one of the kind of default stock images that Google Sites is giving you. Remember, if you are uploading and using your own images, that you need to give credit to where you got the image, make sure that you do that. All right, so I'm gonna keep this like this. I can click the plus button and I can select an image. I can insert something from my drive. I can include a YouTube video. I can add my title here and my paragraph here. And then it's really easy just to keep adding content from there. Other options. You can come here and search for an appropriate YouTube video, type whatever you like in here. Microplastics, I'm just going to select this one and include it there. And remember that you can drag to make bigger, you can drag to center it. So you can really customize this and make it your own. Next, I want to show you, I think it's time to make some pages. If you want to keep it really streamlined and simple, then you can write all of your pieces on your homepage and then just make sure that you insert a divider between your posts and that you use clear headings for your pieces and that might be the way to go. However, if your teacher wants you to have different types of content or different blog posts on different pages, then you will need more than just your home page. So come over here. Instead of insert, we're going to go to pages. Right now, I only have my home page. So I'm going to click on the plus button to add a new page. I'm going to call this blog post number one. Click done. I'm going to add a couple of these. And so you can see as I'm adding them here that they show up in the navigation bar, which is pretty sweet. If you don't like that, if you want it to be a drop down navigation, all you have to do is click and drag underneath the page that you want to be the main one. All right, now they're all in order and they are in a drop down. If you hover over home, blog post one, two, and three. And that's that folks, it's that easy, but we are not done you have to publish it, of course, so that you can share it with others. So we are gonna come up here to publish. Do not, I repeat, do not just copy the URL up here. That will not be shareable with your classmates, with your teacher, because we haven't published it yet, and this is not the public link for sharing. So you have to click publish. And oh, look at that, we haven't titled our site. We have to enter a site name so that it can customize the URL that goes with the site. So I'm gonna enter my site name. And that will duplicate up here. Now we are ready to publish. Click publish. You can see that that is now the tail end of the custom URL. And we can hit publish from there. Once we do that, we will be able to come here to the paperclip, and this is the link that you copy and share with others. However, you don't wanna do that in the beginning and just assume that everything that you continue to add to your site will be automatically updated via that link. No, no, no. You have to, once you add anything new, you have to like say, I changed something, I would have to click publish again for that to take effect. So it shows it side by side what it used to be to what it has been changed to. You have to hit publish for it to update so that that link that you copied here has the most recent version of your work. All right, I'm gonna to go to my homepage. Another thing that I should mention, folks, is that when you are writing blog posts on a website as a professional blogger, 
you want to make sure that your writing is easily scannable and you want to add visual formatting cues to move your readers through your piece. So that means that this is not an essay that you typically write. You are not going to have big long paragraphs. Your goal is to make it scannable and bite sized. So you want to break up those paragraphs within those paragraphs. You want to use bold, italics, underlining, lists, bullet points to highlight and call out those key ideas within the paragraph. Add images, add videos. You want this to be interesting and engaging for your readers, and it is your job as a writer to make sure that this doesn't just look like an essay you copied and pasted onto a Google site. No, you are doing your very best to make sure that you're giving the look and feel of a professional blog and that makes the reading of it all the more awesome. I hope that this has helped you and now you're ready to create your very own Google site for your own English class project. Good luck and happy writing.